What's up guys, it's Parallax Abstraction and welcome to PXA Peaks at Neon Chrome. I'm a little late to the party on this game. This actually came out in April and I totally missed it, which unfortunately isn't a hard thing to do on Steam these days, but it was on sale on Chrono for cheap the other day and I saw Cyberpunk top-down twin-stick shooter and I was like, yes please! And uh, it's I've actually really been enjoying it and I decided to make a video on it. So. And this comes to us from a small Finnish team called Ten Tons, and uh, they are most famous for having made the um, f sort of predecessor to a lot of horde-based games, I guess you could say, or horde modes in games, uh, called Crimson Land, which was actually a, uh, a game that came out back in 2003, and it was a very you know, traditional twin stick arena shooter thing. You see a lot of them these days, but it was pretty innovative for its time and it's got kind of a cult following. And they did a re-release of it in uh, 2014 that was actually quite good. I've never covered it, but I, I liked it quite a bit. And this is sort of their follow up to that. They've taken their engine and they have turned that, that core twin stick concept into a cyberpunk roguelike game. And uh, it's pretty cool what they've done here. I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit. And it's actually a rogue light. It is not a, a rogue light because there is persistent progression that we'll get to. So the idea here is that you're living in a cyberpunk dystopian future where the corporations run everything. I mean, pretty common, but that's kind of a lot of what cyberpunk is. And you're living in this massive gargantuan structure. Uh, the world, because the world is kind of screwed up, it's full of these structures now. And it's so big that Upwards of a million people can live in it, and it's supposed to have just about everything a good corporate citizen needs to live their lives. So, in many cases, people will never leave the structure, because everything they need is within it. And each of these buildings is run by a, what's called an overseer, which is a, a human being who gets sort of infused with a machine, if you will. And they rule the building for four years, and they are elected by the corporate governance. They, the citizens have no say in this. And the idea is that the guy who's in charge of your building... Oh dear, well I got wrecked there. Um, this will happen a lot, by the way. Uh, the guy who's in charge of your superstructure, which is called Neon Chrome, uh, he's kind of gone off the grid a little bit, and he's planning to sort of evolve himself into a much bigger uh, entity that aims to take over the world, and you're a citizen who aims to stop him. That's kind of the story of it. Uh, there's a little bit of voice acting, a little bit of dialogue here and there, not a ton of it, uh, but it's a cool concept at any rate, and it's a good premise for this kind of game. So every time you start a run, you get three procedurally generated characters. There are, most of the levels are procedurally generated as well, and you can pick between people of various different classes who will have different abilities and different skill sets, and they'll also have different layouts of weapons. As you go through the game, you earn money. And this is where the persistent progression comes in. So you can upgrade all these various different attributes of yourself. Plus, you can unlock different weapons, abilities, and enhancements that become available in the world after you've purchased them. So there is a lot of persistent progression in this. And this is one of those games, much like a rogue, it is a rogue light, where the idea is that you will continue to improve behind the scenes as you go. And subsequent ones will get easier. And eventually you'll work your way up to the end and, and take everything out. So. Here's what the le level layout looks like. I'll show you here. See, you're controlling like a clone through virtual reality. That's the idea of this because the mega corporation in this world actually started out as a VR company and then they grew into a multi-trillion dollar operation. So this is what the, the uh, what happens here. So you spawn somebody out of one of these vats so it actually keeps track of how many times you've, you've done a run, which I think is kind of cool. I've only done 12 so far, so I haven't played this super long, but I have actually made a decent amount of progress. So the way the game works is that there are six principal areas here, which make up a set of levels plus a boss. Uh, you can jump to, whoops, sorry, I used a throwable there. So you can jump forward, uh, you can either go back to earlier areas if you want to earn more loot, or you can jump ahead to the latest section that you've unlocked. And you see there, there's 28 levels and then the Overseer is the final big boss. So anytime you hit one of those levels with the red diamonds, that's a boss, and when you beat that, you can jump forward to there. I've gotten to the third area, which has been kicking the living crap out of me, so... So I hopefully don't die immediately, I'm gonna go back to the, uh, to the, the start of the area here. So this is sort of the core of it here. So you're going to meet uh, a whole bunch of different enemies ranging from guards to robots to gun turrets to all kinds of crazy stuff. And 
things move very quickly, but there's almost some RPG mechanics underneath it, it all, which is you can do things like, for example, if you shoot a guard when his back is to you before he's been aggroed, you actually get a sneak attack bonus. Uh, same thing with a lot of the robots as well. Uh, at the same time, guards will, you know, guards can lose sight of you. So, uh, but they'll also run away and get their, get their uh, teammates to come after you. The AI in this is surprisingly good and will keep you on your toes, especially at the later levels. Another cool mechanic is that virtually everything in the world is destructible if you put enough shots into it. So you see I'm taking out walls here, there's glass windows you can take out. There are some elements that are that are not destructible uh, for the purposes of making it so that you can't just cut your way through every level. But there's a lot of destruction and that really gets tricky when, when it comes to the bosses. Uh, because the bosses uh, will just wreck everything around you and sort of cut their own path to you. So if you don't take out a boss quick enough, you lose a lot of your cover, which can get pretty gnarly. So some enemies have shields here, as you see, uh, There's and there's, there's, a, there's a good variety of stuff in here. You'll also pick up uh, weapon upgrades as you go. Um, interestingly enough, this game doesn't have Steam achievements, but it does have achievements within it that give you bonus money, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, you'll sometimes find cybernetic upgrade terminals here, so the amount of these upgrades that you can carry in any one run is a, an upgradable trait. So you see I have the ability to carry six at the moment. So you get to sort of pick one of these, and it gets added in and you get more as you go, but these are per run, so when the run is over, I lose that. And I can unlock more enhancements and abilities later on. Uh, levels will sometimes throw crazy things at you like this, whereas there's a, it says there's a fire team coming. So if I don't get out of this level quickly, a whole whack ton of reinforcements are gonna come at me. Uh, that doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does, and you gotta be on, yeah, and here they come. And you gotta be on your, you gotta be on your toes for that. Uh, there are higher level enemies here, like this sergeant guy who has throwable abilities and stronger weapons that they can throw at you. That guy's a captain, which is way worse. So, you have to stay on your toes and and move quickly and think fast. This game doesn't give you a lot of respite. You've got to really, you got to really be careful. So, you don't have ammo to worry about, but there are various different guns with different kinds of abilities that you'll pick up. You also have a melee function, which you generally, you will have to use sometimes, but in general you don't want to, because getting close to an enemy in this is a bad scene in general. Um, you gotta be careful about that. Your gun will auto-reload when it's empty, or you can choose to reload it yourself as well. Uh, you also have different special abilities that you can use depending on the class. So this guy has a grenade he can throw. There's other things that have like sort of an, uh, um, like a, a, sh a bullets that shoot out in all directions. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Things like that. And uh, again, you can get access to more of those. A lot of the weapons are going to look very familiar to uh, uh, Crimson Land. Some of them were very common in that as special abilities and pickups and things like that. So here's something I picked up. Item 6 of 14 unlocked in Chapter 2. Professionals upgrade. Boost weapon and reload speed by 20%. Install the upgrade. So this is an upgrade that I've unlocked the ability to use should I want to. Uh, you can also pick up... You can pick up health in this. Health is uncommon. Uh, but there are health pickups you'll sometimes find when you're looting. There are also rare, very rarely health stations you'll come across that can be very helpful. Uh, so you have a bunch of different weapons you can get access to. You've got a laser uh, rifle, you've got shot, you've got variants on shotguns, rifles, things like that. You'll have some that are laser based, some that are plasma based, some that just use good old fashioned bullets. You never have to worry about ammo. You do have to worry about reloading though, so that's something to be cognizant of. And you see I have this little drone flying around with me right now who just got his ass kicked. So that is uh, an ability unique to the hacker. So you don't always get that. There's also destructible items in every level which will hurt both you and the enemies, which is what I like. If you're going to do it, do it fairly. Uh, but you are, you do get a bit of a telegraph on how big things are going to blow up and when they're going to blow up. So you definitely uh, you need to watch out for that stuff. But you can use it to your advantage too, which is really helpful. Uh, so as you make your way through, there's also additional... There are bonus levels that you can go into. You'll find them sometimes. They're basically extra elevators that you don't have to go into, but they'll take you to an area that obviously requires you to survive longer and has more risk, but has some real sweet loot if you can go through it. So it's up to you how you how you want to proceed with that. Being the type of person that I am, I tend to always take those things, even if I end up... You know, I have very little health left, which is a stupid thing to do, but this is why I'm generally not terribly good at roguelikes. What can I say? So you see here, I picked up a gun. You can only carry one gun at a time, so you either have to 
take the one that's dropped, or if you don't like it, you just leave it there. You can't bank it and sell it later or anything like that. Oh, God. More of you friggin' fools. Oh, I love it, though, when you get one of those really good hits where you just drop a grenade and it takes out, like, nine guys. That is so very satisfying. Um... And yeah, so this game starts off pretty challenging. Uh, when you're playing even the first level with no upgrades, this game will beat the living crap out of you frequently. And uh, it, it doesn't lighten up. As you get into the higher levels, you may have upgrades and stuff, but you absolutely need them because this just, it gets, uh, it gets vicious. But a good roguelike, uh, or roguelite for that matter, should. You know, it should always keep you challenging. That's kind of a staple of this, this genre, right? I, I don't, definitely don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, some people might knock the the art style of the technical competence of the art in this a little bit. It is it is using a, an engine that was re a refined version of an engine for a 2003 game. I can appreciate that, but I don't know. I think it looks okay, and I think it nails the sort of neon aesthetic uh, of cyberpunk very, very well. The music is also excellent. I think the I think the music sounds fantastic. I really like it. You can actually buy the soundtrack for this game uh, if you want. So I've been spending most of my money in upgrades to, as you can see, health damage and luck. Luck just means you get better loot. Um, but stuff is starting to get real expensive, which is a little fun. So the energy is for using your special weapon. You pick up energy when you loot things as well, but you have to be careful in that you, uh, so you see, here's their in-game achievements here. They give you rewards, but don't have actual Steam achievements, interestingly enough. Um, so you have to be, uh, Oh, so you can upgrade these abilities as well, as you can see there. Uh, so yeah, stuff will get very expensive very fast, but those things are definitely how you're going to help yourself survive later on, right? So that's uh, that's pretty good. Um, let's go with the assassin this time. Why not? So this is the idea. It's a roguelite, and you, I mean, you kind of get the idea of what that involves, right? It's run-based. You're going to... Let's go to the third area. So you're going to try... Uh, you got to... Try and try and try again to get yourself where you need to go. Um, but, you know, some people don't like full-on rogue likes because they don't have persistent progression and you're always starting from zero. Now, some people will enjoy that. Uh, they, they think that that extra level of challenge is, is, is really the staple of the genre. And yeah, there's two schools of thought. I can appreciate both for what they are. I will say that I generally tend to prefer rogue lights because I do like to feel that I'm making some kind of progress and I do feel it takes some of the, because let's be honest here, rogue likes, uh, pr pure rogue likes are based a lot on luck and randomness. There is no way around that. That that and that's that's really the way the genre is is built and designed. And there's a lot of that in here too. But at least with a rogue light, you do have some persistent progression. And you know that if if you work at it, you'll get better. And that's I I think if I given the choice, that's what I that's what I would choose to play first. I think. Um, Okay, so I'm not a hacker, so I can't use that. So let's go in here. All right. Improve melee damage by 200%. That could be handy. Why not? Let's do that. I don't use melee stuff very often, but in these later levels, melee is much more important. So, uh, yeah, so this is not an easy game for sure, but it's not going to kick your ass the way a more traditional uh, roguelike would, or would for sure. But that that's okay by me. And I mean, I just love cyberpunk. You know, I can forgive again. What in hell are those? I've never actually seen those before. That, what are they like? Freaking energy clouds or something? Something? I don't, wow. They have a redonkulous amount of health though. I don't actually know what to do about that. Oh, you learn something new every, you learn something new every video. How about that? So, okay, I can kill it. It just takes a lot. It looks like it doesn't actually do anything to you unless you run into it so at least there's that much but good god that thing is crazy oh, and there's one up there that's swift that's fantastic so key master literally means what it says <laughs> shout out to key master but it just means that that guy holds a holds a key so i have a yellow and a red key right now you see there so this is a handy option this is vampire attack which basically means it it rapidly kills anything that walks within the circle which is really handy in a situation like the one i was in there you can kind of just walk around and wreck fools, which is nice. So there's a health station there. My health is that is the first time ever when I've gotten when I've gotten to a health station and actually had full health. That's crazy. Okay, this assault rifle is way better than what I had, so let's pick that up. 
Um, but yeah, I have really been enjoying this. I, I, I didn't really know. I, I actually didn't even know when I picked this game up on Chrono that, uh, that it was made by uh, Crimson Land people. Uh, I didn't. I, I saw the developer name and it sounded familiar to me, but I didn't actually know that at the time. And uh, this feels like a 10 tons game. There's no doubt about that. And uh, that's a good thing. So you see here in this level, my objective before I can leave is I have to destroy certain targets. And also here's a secondary level here. So we can actually go through um, into here. So this level's called Watch Your Back. So these these bonus levels tend to have kind of a kind of a theme to it. Um, so that's definitely what we're going to run into here. Let's go check this out. So you don't have to go into this, but it's, uh, it, it, you know, and, and it, it's, don't get me wrong, it's very risky. But if you can get in here and get through it, I, you know, I started in a pretty good spot here, obviously, because it's, uh, because I've got, um, full health and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it's... If you can get yourself through here, you'll you'll get some fat loot out of it as well. All right, so uh, all right, okay. So let's take a look. So here's a weapon drop here. Now what this does is it gives you another weapon um, of a higher level. So that's the idea. So you see it said level two there. And every time you hit one of those, you'll get a, a weapon drop of a higher level. Sometimes that will be better than what you have. But if you've upgraded, there are other stations that will actually just upgrade the weapon you're already carrying. So in some cases, you may actually be better off uh, keeping the weapon you've got. Not What drops out of there is not always the best thing. Now you see here a bunch of freaking guys spawn in. So this is where this gets challenging. But uh, sometimes... Um, yeah, sometimes it may not be ideal to keep, uh, now you see here, so here's an item I unlocked in Chapter 3, Plasma Burst Rifle, sure, why not? Yeah, that's better than what I had, so perfect. Alright, so, and, and so, you know, it rolls on like this until you get to the final boss. I have fought two bosses in this, the bosses are not pushovers, uh, they are, even the first one is pretty difficult. So there's the auto dock there. Uh, some of the bosses in this uh, game, even to start with, are very difficult, uh, and they are, you're in arenas that have lots of walls and stuff, but they won't be walls for very long. You've got to be on the move quickly uh, and constantly, and uh, it will definitely uh, it will definitely work you, and I've got several more after this. I can only imagine what the final fight's going to be like. Thankfully, it looks like it does checkpoint at the final fight, at least, so you don't have to do every, you know, an entire section that came before it. I really hope that's the case, because, oh god, otherwise. That's very much a Crimson Land weapon here, the special weapon that I just launched. But, uh, yeah, I, I think this is great. This game, based on the Steam Spy stats, is not actually sold very well, uh, which is a real shame, because I think it's, uh, I think it's a really good evolution for what Crimson Land was, because, oh, eat it. Because uh, Crimson Land was a great game, but it was also very simple. You know, it was doing one specific thing, and they decided to take that concept. Like, this game has Crimson Land written all over it. But they took that, and they gave it a story, they gave it a more interesting world, and they gave it some more in-depth mechanics and, and changed the genre up a little bit. But it still retains its original roots, which I think is really cool. It was a good way to iterate on the formula without it just being Crimson Land 2. Uh, which I also would not have necessarily opposed, but, uh, you know, I think this is a, a really nice iteration on that. And obviously, I love Cyberpunk. Uh, you know, for the, when I first started covering roguelikes on PXA Peaks, for the longest time I said, I'm not really a fan of roguelikes, um, or even roguelites, and that one would have to really impress me uh, to get any kind of notice from me. But I've covered a lot of them in the last while, and honestly... The more I've played of them, the more I've been enjoying them. I think I'm actually really turning a corner on this genre, uh, which is cool, given that I'm kind of an old fart gamer at this point, uh, being almost 40 years old. Huh. Um, you know, I, I, I'm enjoying the fact that a genre I, I traditionally throughout most of my gaming life didn't enjoy, I'm starting to, to come around on and, and starting to appreciate it some of the when it's done in some cool ways, which I, uh, I really like. Uh, this game does have up to four-player co-op as well, which I think would be a ton of fun. Uh, unfortunately, it's local only, uh, which means there's a good chance I'm probably never going to end up playing it. Because uh, I just... There's only one other person who lives in this house who isn't really into games. She definitely wouldn't be into ones this hard. And uh, 
I, I know you can't just slap on, you know, online play into a game. I know that's not easy, but it would have been really nice to, to have online co-op in this. It probably would have been done if it sold better, but it doesn't look like it really has, which, uh, which, which bums me out. Um, but nonetheless, if you have a group of people you can play with, I could see this being... Oh god, there's another fire team coming. Greg. Uh, I could see this being just a boatload of fun uh, with a group. Uh, I don't know if it scales up or if it gets harder. Uh, where the hell is that other target? Oh, it's down here. Okay, good. Uh, but it would be it would be a good time. But this is a blending of stuff I like. You know, it's a good roguelike with uh, roguelite with persistent progression, and it's a twin stick shooter. And I love I love a good twin stick shooter. Um, you know, even though there's a million in one of them, I never really I, I still never get tired of this of this genre. Um, oh god. I'm just gonna melee you suckers. All right, that thing's dead. All targets destroyed. All right, time to get them. Oh god! Oh god, they're all—they've all got friggin' shields. No! Oh god, time to get the rock out of here. Gotta go, 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 gotta go. Peace. There's no way I'm gonna beat the boss this time. No friggin' way, though. That would be amazing. It would be nice to show you guys what one of the bosses looks like, so we'll see what we can do here. But I'm also really, really hurting, and I don't know if there's gonna be an auto dock in this area. But we shall see. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm actually really liking this. This is uh, was a very pleasant surprise to me because it's a game I had no idea was coming. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't actually get review code for this. I just went out and bought it on my own because it looked cool. And I enjoyed it so much that I was like, you know what? More people need to play this game. So that's why I chose to do a little, uh, I chose to do a video on it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I will often give a game more of a pass than I might another game if it's cyberpunk just because I love the, the theme. But even if this wasn't cyberpunk, even if this was like some kind of, I don't know, you know, modern military equivalent or whatever, it still plays great. Uh, and it still uh, has a really good system for progression and while being very, very challenging. There's clearly a lot of levels in it, so this is not a... Uh, you know, this is not a game... I mean, you might finish this really quick if you're really good at this kind of genre or really lucky. But at the same time, this is not a game that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna blow through in a couple of hours. Definitely not. So it's pretty good value as well, uh, because it's it's only 15 bucks on Steam. It is apparently either on or coming to the PS4 and Xbox One as well. So you do actually have a few different ways to play it, which is uh, which is very cool. I hope this is maybe done better on consoles. Um, but honestly, I never, it had never gotten any attention. Um, that I'm aware of prior to, to it coming up on Chrono, so I'm guessing uh, probably not. But uh, yeah, I've been enjoying this a lot, and uh, Ten Tons clearly knows what they're good at, and, and decided to focus, I guess, more on just expanding that out. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, for sure. Man, I got myself a ton of money, too. That's gonna be really handy. So, I just want to try to find a way out here, because I'd really love to show you guys a boss. Uh, and actually, I haven't seen the boss for the third section yet, which would be pretty cool, so... Uh, sure, let's do that. Uh, I thought that was actually the way out, but it doesn't look like it. So, you see there's a lot of exploration in that involved, too. You know, you've actually got to traversal level because there, there is an element of random generation in these levels too so you have to be able to find your way about and uh you know find the way forward uh i guess it's through here oh god this looks so i think really the idea with these energy enemies is though you can take them out it's it doesn't look like you can really hurt them uh with just about any weapon to a significant degree so it seems pretty clear that what they really want you to do is just avoid them uh, if you can, because they're they don't hurt you unless they come into contact with you and they're relatively slow So it definitely seems like they want you to uh... Well, okay so much for that. I probably shouldn't spoil the bosses anyway So and you see it keeps track of your statistics there and uh, well, I got a ton of money to spend on upgrades now, so 
But yeah, that is Neon Chrome, developed and published by 10 Tons in 2016 for the PC, the PS4, and the Xbox One. It's 15 bucks on Steam. Uh, I got it for a lot less on Chrono, but honestly, if I paid 15 bucks for this, I would have been very, very happy with it. Um, I was playing with a controller, but it does play fine with a keyboard and mouse as well, so you have options there too, and you can mix and match those for co-op, uh, which you'd obviously have to. But uh, yeah, I think this is a, uh, a really cool cyberpunk adventure. It's a good roguelike and it's a good cyberpunk game, uh, which is a, a fantastic combination. And uh, I will probably finish this, actually. I, uh, I'm really enjoying it. And this is something I could see myself coming back to on a regular basis until I get through it. My name is been Parallax Abstraction. Thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw here, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and telling other people. That would help me out a great deal. And well, I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, guys. I got more cyber in to do. Must save the cyber.